So before we get started, everyone, I would like you to take um, five nice deep breaths, please. So I just want to thank everyone for joining us uh, for Blinded by False Light Leadership uh, Elimination and the Rise of New Light Illumination Women Leaders. And this is with new leadership light illuminators, Ali Nicole Wow, which is me, and uh, Gina Gardner and Brenda Jacobson. And uh, this topic is actually part of our new Illumination Leadership Light Shine Forth Now virtual conversational training uh, conference. But before we get started today uh, with our core focus and I bring uh, Gina and Brenda forward, I would actually like to share a few of the focus areas for our upcoming virtual uh, conversational training uh, conference. It's very exciting to be actually bringing this forth, especially during these times. So just a few of the areas that are gonna be covered is I'm actually going to provide um, an opening training and it's called New Leadership Light on Damascus Road is inspired by one of my works. And uh, Brenda is going to do a mini talk on awakening your new luminous leadership light and unleashing your magic in the world. And uh, Gina is going to do a mini talk on the enlightened soul mission group blueprint of a new illumination leader. And then I'm going to provide sort of a mini keynote on rise, lead, and shine forth as a new illuminate leader. So again, we are very excited to provide this experience for uh, leaders, uh, primarily women leaders during these times of transition into uh, really a new world experience. So let me just share a little bit about our core focus for today. So I would say that the core objective for this session is, is really about heightening the awareness of um, false leadership callings that are, are, are taking place during this time, but also to bring awareness to the nature of um, this time in global evolution for humanity's rebirth and what leadership position women should be taking during this time in order to really participate um, in the new illuminate expansion, uh, but also expression of leadership demonstrations. And also before the close of this session, I will be sharing a few publications from the three of us that will um, help you to level up uh, your leadership light uh, during these times. And also there'll be some information uh, below about our upcoming uh, virtual conversational training conference and also when that's gonna uh, come available. So um, again, very excited to be to be bringing this forth. And, and actually I'm feeling guided at the moment to um, read part of an email uh, that I sent to both uh, Gina and, and Brenda when I invited them to do this call with me. So I'm gonna grab that um, as I feel that it's going to uh, speak uh, very poignantly to uh, the focus uh, that we are gonna be providing today. So here's just a little excerpt of the email that I sent to them. And it says, uh, there are leaders, uh, primarily empathic women, who are about to forfeit being a part of the new illumination leadership. They were called to bring forth the new light, but won't be able to. And their fallout is going to be traumatic. Too many of them are being easily distracted and allowing themselves to get caught up in the lower vibrations of the masculine energy of all that's going on in the world. They have succumbed to the lower trajectories and actually are about to lose their influential roles that they already have because they've contaminated themselves and at this point can't participate in the new trajectories. Their impact and income will be affected uh, by this. And so um, during this time, it's just a little excerpt that I provided uh, for them about the nature of this call. Also during our time together, I'm actually going to share a few posts that I recently uh, put up on Facebook. And uh, during this time, I'm going to uh, welcome uh, both 
Gina uh, and Brenda, and we're going to have some dialogue, and I'm excited about this. So um, I want to first welcome Gina. Gina, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a great privilege. This is such an important topic, and I am I'm very, very uh, privileged, really, to be part of it. I think it's just so vital that people recognize what's going on and have an opportunity to put things right. Yes, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And thank you so much. I can't wait to um, have a discussion around uh, this particular focus. And welcome, Brenda. Thank you so much for uh, joining in on this today. I am thrilled to be here with both of you. Um, it's And it's such a, an important topic and one that's that I'm really passionate about having come out of you know, mm -hmm. 20 some years in the C-suite and seeing the way the world has operated. And, you know, for 20 years, I've known that we needed this evolution to happen within the mm. business world. We needed to bring that feminine light energy into the business yes. world. And I am so thrilled to be a part of this, where we're actually putting that into action and moving the world yes. forward. So thank you, mm -hmm. both of you. <laughs> thank you. And it's so important. I love what you stated because in this time of great awakening, which is your primary work of helping others to awaken more consciously, it, it's really vital where we keep our focus and energy during this time so that we can be the, the true beacons of new light and hope, you know, within um, this new emerging experience. And so it's a very, very important topic. I felt there was an urgency to, to come forth with this. And though I'll touch on a few things and we'll have a discussion, but we'll talk about it more at length during uh, the actual conference. So uh, what I would like to do now is I mentioned that I was going to share from a few uh, recent Facebook posts that I had. And so I'm actually gonna combine two <laughs> uh, together. And then we can have some dialogue around it because I really want to, to hear uh, what you both have to say because um, this is a very time sensitive topic and leaders, women primarily, they need to be very much aware of where the energy needs to be flowing and not getting into um, being parts of the false light thinking that they are actually being you know, these, these beacons of, of light and hope because that's not actually what's taking place. So um, I addressed uh, the highly sensitive with the impacts on a particular post and, and then I followed up, I believe it was the same day or it may have been the next day um, with a post that related to the new illuminate leadership um, and basically what the positioning is, um, how uh, we are showing up in those roles during this time and, and those are the characteristics to look for. So here goes uh, the first post. It says, for those who are empathic or highly sensitive, it's important during this time that you keep your energy level up and in the highest vibration. You play an important role in the next level of evolution for our world. You are here to be part of the new illuminate leadership that brings new light, new hope, and new solutions. You can't be part of new solutions if you're allowing yourself to be contaminated by the lower vibrational aspects of social media, politics, or things going on in this world. Protect your energy and spirit. Um, don't allow others to bring those lower frequencies into your space. You can't afford to take on anyone's low vibe baggage during this time, especially if they are self-inducing and self-indulging in the lower aspects of politics, focusing on problems and blame gaming. It's pure contamination and they don't even realize it. Always keep in mind that even if something that people believe to be true, when it's taken to extreme becomes error. So even if you believe strongly about something. Don't compromise your alignment during these times to shift into lower vibrations just because you want your voice to be heard and make your stand. There will be vibrational consequences in the long run. 
Also, don't expect others to raise you up vibrationally if you are intentionally participating in lower vibes. It's not fair to others. And then I uh, provided some more context to new illumination. So new illuminators of empathic leaders realize that they have to come from a different place than the norm and be part of solutions from a higher vantage point. So please, I encourage other impacts to keep their directions clear, protect their energy, and make others responsible for their own shifts and leveling ups during this time if they aren't going to step into new solution spaces and new light as they lead. People think they're doing positive things all while being negative in their approaches about it. Empaths can pick up on that false premise quickly. However, at the same time, several empaths are falling into the trap as they believe to be doing something great and they will forfeit their higher calling. For those who are ready to level up their empathic leadership light, be sure to use wisdom during this time and don't compromise your alignment, peace, or energy. And then I followed up with this post here. New illuminate leaders during this time are leveling up to shine their new light in new ways and not going with the traditional norms. Currently, they're the ones who are making major moves in silence, keeping their peace in the midst of chaos and creating new solutions for greater impact and change. You won't necessarily see them posting about what they're doing or even their views on certain things or trying to make a point to persuade others. Their silence will be made loud through the illumination of new leadership light. Several leaders talk about what it takes to be a good leader. However, they don't realize that their demonstration isn't representing or reflecting anything different than even the leadership that they criticize or what they feel needs improvement. Others are watching and making decisions based on what's being reflected and how others are showing up during this time. Sometimes we have to be loud in new ways and shine our light as new representations of Lighthouse leadership. This is the time to take a vibrational stance first versus a vocal one. So before I have you both to share uh, your thoughts around this, I, I just want to add to uh, what I stated is that if we, so let me see, I want to phrase this here. Um, if we do things out of order, we will forfeit. And frustration will cause others to forfeit. This is what happened to Moses um, in the Bible when he struck the rock uh, for water to flow out instead of speaking to it as God had commanded. And it was because of this one act of misalignment that he, along with the tribe he was leading, forfeited um, you know, the promised land. So during this time, many leaders, women primarily, they are allowing um, this to happen to them um, when it's really time to be the new light that I was speaking about and lead in new ways of higher intentionality. It's the time to be leading from um, the divine flow state of their feminine calling and really vibrationally aligning with uh, the required uh, solutions and shifts that are really needed during this time. And I'm just, I'm going to say this as bluntly as possible. If you are fighting against something and you're frustrated in your functionality, the way you're operating, trust me, you, you, you don't understand how things work um, for this new era. And you are being darkened by your ego's agenda and also being influenced by a collective bias. And that collective bias is trying to hang on to old formats. And even though you believe that you are acting to, to bring about change, I'm, I'm going to say this, that's not what's going on. And it's unfortunate that too many have already struck the rock um, 
And now they're actually being repositioned into lower dimensional purposes, or really they could possibly uh, fade altogether. But what's going to happen is that the rise of new illuminate uh, light leaders, that's what's coming forth to, you know, to bring about this change. And so before I actually share about the primary groups of women who actually have already forfeited in a sense and uh, will start to face elimination. Um, I actually want to hear uh, the thoughts of, of Gina uh, and, and Brenda. So um, who should I start with first? <laughs> who wants you to go choose. first to this? You, you go choose. ahead, Gina. It's really interesting, isn't it? Because one of the things that I've observed over the last few months, and it's become even more so over the last few weeks mm -hmm. is people who um, who talk about that they have a, a huge purpose and it is about supporting and helping humanity mm -hmm. have got caught up in the fear and in the sense of lack and the sense mm -hmm. of I've got to be right in mm -hmm. order and by being right you've got to be wrong Mm -hmm. And I've noticed it, um, you know, I belong to a couple of online networks and it's been very interesting how the, the whole vibration of the conversation mm -hmm. gets completely um, solid by one or two people starting to have polarised views about politics or about right. um, vaccinations or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how what has been a really high vibrational group um, really pushing um, the boundaries, how quickly that falls mm -hmm. into something which is completely different. Right. And I, I've thought quite a lot about it because I've noticed it in, in a, a few people that, that we know well, and mm -hmm. I, as I've read um, posts and things like that, mm -hmm. the, there is that sense of jarring. Right. This does not feel in alignment with me. I do not want part of that because my belief is that we are being tested at the moment yeah. and that it is absolutely critical mm -hmm. that we stay operating from our heart, that we come from a place of faith, that yeah. actually what's going on is not our job, that our job is something beyond and above mm -hmm. and we have to be you know so for example the floods uh, that have been going on if you want to show people the way to safety you've got to be up high you can't be in the middle of the flood That's right you can't you might be able to do the immediate rescue but you're not going to be able to help them find a safe and secure place unless you can lead and that has to come from above you have to take them to a higher place. Mm. And there is mm. so much dissent and so much fear and um, distress in the world mm -hmm. that I believe that what's going to make the difference is those people who can hold themselves accountable, yes. intentional is the word you use, in terms of mm -hmm. the vibrational state that not only do you live in, but that that you broadcast to other people so that we can then um, encourage people to come out of the, the muddy water and the, um, the currents which have been so toxic mm -hmm. to find a new way. Absolutely. I I, yes, I love what you stated. And it, it's, it's so great because actually um, a little bit later, I'm going to talk about the new divine uh, order uh, shifts that are occurring and actually the position that we have to be taking is really shifting even from savior and enabler and blamer to self-responsibility, self-accountability and source reliability. So you're setting us up for, <laughs> you know, for, um, for that part of the conversation, you know, that will take place later. But everything you said is so on point because you do have to be in that higher ground um, I just love metaphorically that, that analogy that you use. It was the perfect example. And it doesn't mean that new light uh, leaders in, in this new illumination, it doesn't mean that they 
are airy fairy and have their, you know, head buried in the sand and they're just, you know, it's, it's all great. No, they're very much aware. We are very much aware of what is going on, but we are doing our jobs to maintain um, the higher frequency and, and focus in on the solutions and be creating those solutions and not um, feeling the need to broadcast what the problems are. And because that's very obvious, that's, you know, and, and um, we're feeling the need to draw attention, you know, to that. And I'm going to speak to that, too, a little bit later of why some are actually doing that during this time. And though it may seem rewarding to them, but there's going to be some consequences, um, you know, that will definitely play out. Uh, but let's hear from Brenda and um, then before we, we before we do, could I just come yes. back? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I apologize. Go ahead. No, no, uh, but just to say that, you know, there's now so much research that shows that that if you are into problem, if you're fo focusing on the problem, that you are mm -hmm. operating out of left brain. Mm -hmm. Left brain right. has uh, the ability to look at cause and consequence, but it doesn't see solutions. It right. tends to catastrophize and it doesn't look at relationships. It's very, very linear. And it's mm -hmm. not the place you need to be to find solutions. You right. need to be right brained. You need to breathe and to be able to access your creativity and your solution mm -hmm. finding. Yes. And that's where yes. you find options. That's where you develop meaningful and positive relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're seeing is that the fear, and it tends, I believe, to be when people are in fear that everything is very very left brained mm -hmm. and we are people are reproducing the very thinking that got them into the mess right so now it's got to be um you know we've got to choose something different we've got to take responsibility for mm -hmm. doing things in a different way in a way where we can uh can find a solution that isn't about me beating you. The solution is about being able to take others with you and to help them to develop the potential to do the same. Absolutely. Well stated. Well stated. That that could not have been said better. And, and we will definitely continue the discussion around this. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to bring Brenda in uh, so we can hear from her and then um, we can continue the conversation uh, with a few other things that I want to share um, and, and address. So Brenda would love to hear from you. Yeah. I don't know what, you, what more I can add. You guys were brilliant. <laughs> with everything that you brought up. I love um, your last commentary, Gina, about um, the left brain. One of my favorite quotes from Albert Einstein is that you can't solve a problem from the same vibration that created it in the first place. Absolutely. And something like that, I'm paraphrasing, but mm -hmm. it's, that's so relevant here is that if you're trying to resolve issues in that same lower vibration, you're never going to get there. You're never going to achieve, you're never going to cross the chasm into this new vibratory frequency. And it, it's where people need to be. Our heart, our right brain is what's connected to our heart, which is connected to our intuition and to source. And that's why it, it, when it's so creative because it accesses that higher level of wisdom and brings that in to resolve whatever the challenges are that we are currently facing. So I think that it's, um, it's critical that people start to balance their right and left brain. It's not a good or bad thing. Like they're not good or bad. They both have a very powerful function for us. It's when we can integrate them and work interhemispherically yes. that mm -hmm. the that the power just exceeds anything that we could imagine at this level. So I, and, and I agree with both of you. I've seen so many people who think that they're um, and they don't even use the word evolve, which is probably accurate. They, they think they're transforming, <laughs> yeah. but they're transforming. Mm -hmm. They're really focused on transformation and transforming their way of leadership. And they are making a difference. They are moving from that masculine killer be killed model into that feminine, you know, thrive together model uh, where they're more focused on, on the people, but they're still holding at that lower frequency mm -hmm. and just yes. changing slightly, but they haven't actually moved into that completely different 
organism. They haven't metamorphosized. They have no, not exactly. Made, they have they not metamorphosized. Made we'll that talk leap. about that too. Right. Mm-hmm. So they Just haven't made the that, that leap across mm-hmm. the chasm to be something very different than they were in the old vibration. Right. Um, that's right. That's the work that needs to be done. And mm-hmm. as you pointed out, not, not everybody is going to be in the, in the position to actually do that. The, you need a, you need a lot of courage. You need a very open mind to move into that new way of being. It's not hard. It's, it's so the energy is so light. The vibration is so high that it happens very easily. It's that, you know, it, it, our fears, one of the quotes that came out of one of the meditations that I did is, you know, what our fears make solid turns to mist when we embrace it. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what happens is it looks so scary to have to leave behind what you've, you know, what you've learned and over your entire life and step into something brand new. But there's a lot of fear as, as Gina pointed out, people are just bogged down in fear of moving into this new vibration. But if they just have, you know, find the courage to make that step into the mist, it is just brilliant on the other side. And it happens so easily the, they don't have to recreate the program. The program is already there waiting for them. It is the way of being is, is ever present in that vibration. All they have to do is find the courage to make the step into the mist. Okay. That's all I would add to the brilliance oh, no. that you guys brought to this. Oh, thank you. And that was brilliant when you, that was brilliant when you stated. And, you know, the thing about it is, when people aren't not only courageous enough, but but also willing in a sense, because and we'll talk about this a little bit later too, where there, there's a reason why they're holding on to the old constructs, even though they believe that they're they're making great change. And the reason why this comes up for women uh, primarily during this time is because the next wave of evolution and the shifting, as I mentioned um, before, is dependent upon um, women stepping into these roles of the higher leadership. And uh, men are actually, some are, are actually ready to experience that type of shift. Now we still have obviously the ones who are holding on to uh, the old paradigms, uh, but there are some empathic men, for sure, who are definitely uh, ready for the new integration, but they have not come to the light because they're kind of afraid to share their voices, um, uh, you know, around that. But they are paying attention to women in leadership during this time. And they're making decisions on who they're not only going to support, but whose movement, you know, they want to be a part of and help to, you know, be one of the um, leading kings uh, to help bring in the right aligned and divine balance between the masculine and the, and the feminine, work feminine working together um, really as one cohesive unit, but understanding that it is the time for this newer, lighter, higher approach that is coming by way of the women birthing this new world experience. So something I'm gonna go ahead and address right now, um, and this just came from the divine wisdom and, and, and guidance. So I'm going to share something that may be hard on certain people's flesh. This is not coming from me. This is the direct wisdom of who's going to be a part of that annihilation and um, what actually is going to uh, be taking place. So I know you all probably remember that uh, the Dalai Lama, uh, Dalai Lama had stated that um, the world would be saved by the Western um, woman. Yeah. And yeah, then basically it was just a, a call to action for women uh, throughout the West um, to, to rise up and, and be the truth of who they are. And, and though there's a, a lot of truth to what was stated and can say prophetically in a sense um, that that is or will be playing out. 
but there is um, certain groups and the the wisdom of the energy was very specific of actually ones that um, won't be in the leading forces, so to speak, um, in this Western um, women's solutions movement, if you will. And, and so I'm going to share this again, this is not my opinion. This is what the wisdom uh, provided and it actually makes a lot of sense to me <laughs> based on uh, what's been being witnessed and, and viewed over time, but also uh, more recently. And so there's a certain group, it's not all, but um, what came through was that there is going to be a particular group of uh, Caucasian American women who actually won't be, will not be um, in the leading forces of what's um, emerging that is going to be other uh, foreign country women alliances and strong uh, Western world minority uh, women who will mobilize um, this global evolution and be the midwives of birthing uh, this new world. Now, again, this does not um, include all uh, Caucasian women um, nor does this exclude other nationalities um, either. All who are participating out of alignment during these times will be eliminated. But uh, there is a primary group um, who is leading in this resistance and it is primarily has been identified in the Caucasian American um, woman and these are women who are, in, some of them already involved in politics, um, very high level leadership uh, positions, some just local positions and unknown. But what was coming through is primarily any woman who basically has a social media platform who is trying to make her leadership voice known to, to influence others from a lower vibrational stance. And so this is where as I mentioned about the false callings. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about this um, because this is very important so that people can become aware of what you could be potentially participating in and why you need to actually be shifting into uh, the newer dynamics. There's a statement or an old phrase that says that good intentions pave the pathway to hell. And I know you are, are familiar with that. <laughs> yeah, probably have heard that, I would imagine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Yes, and so though these women believe that their intention is pure and um, it's the right thing to do, again, when we operate out of alignment, then it's going to be costly because uh, going back even before I share uh, why they're going to be forfeiting, going back to what I mentioned earlier about Moses, Moses was used to um, striking and parting the sea with his staff and doing all, he was used to that, he was accustomed to that. But when a new command came and a new direction came, no, this is how you do it this time. He was all caught up in his frustration with the people and with the circumstances that even though the new command was given, he was, he, because he was in frustration, he acted out of what he normally would and he, he started striking and it was not time to do that and again therefore he forfeited along with the others of going into the promised land and it had to be a new generation to rise up and move um, forward you know to, to go forward so um, these women are forfeiting and I'm going to share again the wisdom that uh, that came through um, so these women are forfeiting because they're, they're triggered with autopilot reactions of confusing their empathy, intuition, nurturing qualities, and heart-centeredness for a cause with a false calling to help heal, be heard, and take a stand against what they feel is unjust instead of understanding how the new earth grid operates. Um, they don't understand the law of vibrations and the birthing pains that are manifesting through divine disruptions of chaos and reordering events that are designed 
to give way to the birthing of a new unknown world that's for the highest and best good of all, which also means, I'm going to say this, um, this also means that deep down they want to hang on to the old because they don't know who they are in a new identity and who they will be. They, they don't know what a new identity for them would look like because they're used to being in these, in these modes. So there's partially, yes, I'm passionate about this. I'm upset about the things going on and there needs to be change happening. Absolutely. Um, and, and you can leverage that frustration as fuel in a sense to um, bring about some change. But the difference is, is that you've got to be careful with the energy that you come from. And you got to ask yourself, why is this? Because part of that is yes. And part of it is that you aren't really ready to let go of doing something in a new way, because that's going to require you to be different. Another thing that came up was operating from unhealed wounds within themselves instead of higher divine timing wisdom, meaning they are not connected to higher wisdom for the metamorphosis of the plan for this new earth trajectory and humanities evolving into this new entity of a divine expression. So as I mentioned, as Brenda was, was um, talking about, they want to hang on to the transformations and the different growth spurts, but they don't really want to evolutionize themselves. And I mentioned, yeah, they haven't metamorphosized. And if you haven't metamorphosized, you can't evolutionize. And they is a reason, again, why they, they continue. Some of it is um, self-induced ignorance for sure, but underneath, some of it is not also wanting to, uh, to let go of the old format and kind of tricking themselves in the trap to think, see, I'm doing this great cause and I'm doing um, all these different things and I'm getting people to agree and, and see me and hear me and all of this, but it really is acting out of unhealed wounds. And so there's no wholeness that has really been established. And so actually I'm gonna share on that note, um, another post, which was actually a promo post. It's an excerpt that I'm gonna share from a recent training that I did uh, with my great friend and colleague, um, Joseph L. Jones Jr. We focused on um, developing the whole of you as a professional and unleashing your greater potential. So uh, a few things that we talked about was um, how so many professionals develop skills um, but they don't actually develop their wholeness factor. And we also discussed how um, the traditional self-help and self-improvement practices have not served uh, one's greater um, expansion. And actually that's really playing out because a lot of the leaders, uh, influencers that we see out here are ones who are teaching self-empowerment, teaching self-help, teaching leadership, improvement, development, all these different things. And they have, um, you know, study themselves, put themselves through processes, but yet we still see that there's, you know, no true metamorphosis that has, uh, that has taken place. They've transformed, as I say, more so like a tadpole to a frog. It just became bigger, but it actually has not undergone the process in which a caterpillar breaks down, unforms, and then metamorphosizes into a completely different entity. Of, you know, of an expression. So let me, I'm gonna read a little bit from uh, the post. Uh, it says, I also shared uh, briefly about my experiences over the years with seeing all that goes on behind the scenes with professionals, leaders, and more who are showing up in front of others on social media one way. However, behind the scenes, they are complete basket cases, um, even verbally abusive at times and often struggling in many ways. Um, they are trying to empower others to be whole, yet they are human Swiss cheese factories in motion, full of holes, and they lack wholeness. We can afford for this to continue to be more of the norm in our marketplace. It is to the biggest detriment of those whom they serve and also uh, to themselves, they do a huge disservice uh, as well. I went on to talk about with having a background in counseling, psychology, certified in mental uh, wellness, um, awareness, and several other related areas, 
I'm very much aware of the importance of wholeness and why it's important to develop the whole of a professional and not just uh, skills alone. We create better work environments and marketplaces when the whole of a professional um, is, is developed. And so going back to what I mentioned is, yes, we have these leaders out here who have done self-empowerment. They're out here empowering others. They have mastered and their skills and been honing their craft, but really they have not um, mastered their wholeness factor. And that's why they can share from these places of unhealed wounds, thinking that, no, 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 there's injustice in the world and this is what's going on and all these different things. And I'm sharing from this place because change needs to happen. Well, but change can't happen in the ways that traditionally we think has helped. That hasn't helped. That's why people are the way that they are now is that there has not been the inner evolution to bring about wholeness, okay, that you can function from the place of wholeness. And so that's why if there's the need, I got to be right about this, I need to make this person wrong. And if anybody's participating this way, they're X, Y, and Z, and I need to share my voice. What is this really about? Is it really about sharing your voice to evolve humanity and to um, expand what's going on? Or is this really a cry of unhealed things that need to come forth? This is a part of the birthing of a new. And sometimes people will have their own disruptions. You know, if you feel you've never been heard before or you feel that, hey, I need to stay popular right now. So I need to be talking about this. There's a lot of reasons why certain activity is going on. But I can rest assure you that it is not from the place of the higher divine calling. It is from the position of false calling and being blinded by um, a false premise to, you know, to be able to share. Again, not saying that some things aren't legitimate, it's just the way um, that it's, it's being done. And the timing is off for how it's being done. So I'm gonna share this really quickly. Um, the, the current, um, their current reward that will eventually follow up with regret. So this was the other um, part of the wisdom that came it, as they're doing all of what they're doing. It says they, they will rise for a moment in popularity because that's the conditioning of the masses you know, to perceive. You know, people jump onto what they think is trending, the hottest thing now. And, and people like drama and they get stirred up in it. Um, and even though, these ones who are leading from that place, except they will rise up temp temporarily for sure. Um, however, will be reduced in relevance and even revenue permanently until their blinded eyes are open in the awakening of the great illuminations and new foundations are laid for their life and leadership mission, which is, this is gonna be something I will teach on uh, during the new leadership light on Damascus road. Um, so I am going to say this, that there, there is some new light and new hope, even for these leaders that are actually forfeiting, you know, during this time. Um, and or let me just say this, I, I, I need to rephrase this um, so that I'm very clear, because th there's going to be fallout regardless, so that they're, they're not escaping that. But as it's happening during and even after um, they've experienced kind of the fallout, um, there's, there's going to be a short window for them to have some support. But this support is only going to be to set them up for a very self-guided journey. So it will be kind of a lonely journey in a sense for them getting back to um, gaining new ground. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we are um, actually within the conference. But yet, like I said, this is a very interesting um, dynamic. Some people know there, there won't be, you know, any of the recovery, so to speak, because they're not willing to do what Brenda mentioned about be courageous, but also um, be willing to shift into the new because they want to hold on to the old identity and won't allow themselves to 
evolve into these beautiful expanded butterflies of luminous light. Um, so it, like I said, it's, it's gonna be interesting, um, but this is gonna bring about great change on levels like never before. So before I actually quickly share um, the new divine order shifts um, and the resources, uh, I would really love to hear just uh, the thoughts from both Gina and, and Brenda. So which one of you want to jump in? Uh, and you wanna go first, Brenda? Sorry, I have myself on mute because I'm coughing a bit. <clears throat> um, yes, I just I just concur with everything that you have brought forward, Ellie Nicole. And I don't think we've ever seen a time, I know that we've never seen a time where it was just so mandatory that somebody evolve if they want to yeah, keep right. going in on the trajectory that the world is going on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this, this evolution is not a choice for any of us. The world, the planet is evolving mm -hmm. and we need to do our bit to stay up and stay current, stay in that flow of, of positive light energy and mm -hmm. take the journey along with the planet. And if not, then I don't know what's going to be left behind. There'll obviously be something, but I, as you pointed out, it won't be um, commanding the gifts that they have had available yeah. to them at this point that it will be, you know, those, those will have to die off in order mm -hmm. to remain in that lower vibration energy, because those gifts that we all came in with were really what was gearing us for this evolutionary shift. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you yes. know, to, to, if we're choosing to remain behind, we don't need those gifts. They don't fit in this exactly. um, lower vibrational world. Mm -hmm. So moving into that higher evolved vibration is where those gifts will now really come to life. And mm -hmm. I would say that the, you know, what people have experienced of those gifts is almost in many cases, just a hint that there's something mm -hmm. bigger within them. Yes. Um, they will see that flourish when they step through the mist and into this new vibration and they will see it, it'll be so, come so clear the purpose behind those gifts where wh how mm -hmm. it applies where they fit in this is also a world of collaboration yes of, you know no man stands alone no woman stands alone that's right that um are the gifts that we hold are really a key to a, a bigger box you know mm -hmm. bigger container that has all of these vibrant evolved light being souls in it and mm -hmm. we just hold one piece, one piece of that puzzle that pulls mm -hmm. together this, this absolutely incredible picture of the new world. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, is, it is just so critical for people to, you know, to have the courage to make that journey across, take, take the expedition with us, move, move into that new vibrant energy and, um, leave, leave the old stuff behind. It never really served any of any of us no. as empaths that came in. It didn't serve us. It was a holding. We were in a holding pattern mm -hmm. in that in that old world. And um, knowing deep down in a, at the soul level, we knew that there was something more for us there, but not being able to understand it because it hadn't really revealed itself to us. Right. Um, right. It's now being revealed. It's this great revelation mm -hmm. that is opening up this wonderful vista. Mm. And for those who, who are ready to awaken those internal gifts that they, that they have felt the presence of and bring them into the full light, this will be a brilliant, brilliant, absolutely exhilarating journey. Absolutely. Um, it will be the magical journey, the one that you are. Um, yeah awakening more people to the luminous and now you trigger something queen gina before i actually bring you uh, forward to say something I, I had to go to a post now because she triggered something i think it's very <laughs> relevant here um and it's really about uh the, the magic and again that's what you're going to be talking about during the conference is really awakening leaders to this new luminous uh you know magic in their in their leadership because that's yeah. going to be really required for um this next phase into this 
very brilliant, as you state, uh, new world experience. And, and so one of the posts led with, I actually shared, um, it was a, a post I shared and then I just added my commentary to it. But the, the actual post said, invest more time with the people who bring out the, ma- bring out, uh, the magic in you and not, mm. the ma- and not the madness. And so then I put, yes, right? I put, um, exactly. If yeah. you're currently focused on uh, and or flowing your energy in lower vibrational activity, and I put in parentheses, including the political stuff, you are not calibrated to be in my vibrational, mental, or physical space, meaning you won't be getting any of my time. You can't be part of magical shifts and solutions for great change if you're engulfed in the madness. You can't solve anything that's going to be meaningful that you push against from a lower vibrational stance. The vibrational welcome mat is not down for those who are creating um, what I put the, oh, okay. The vibrational welcome mat is down for those who are creating the magic. And by doing so, they are dispelling the madness um, with right aligned inspired actions from a high vibrational state. So basically I, I have these, when I do do posts and it could trigger something, I, I put that, yeah. it, it's my um, welcome mat is not down. My social media welcome mat is not down for all comments of all kinds. So I'm very, yeah. I have a disclaimer, but I put that there that, you know, my vibrational welcome mat is down for those who are creating the magic. And by doing so, as I mentioned, they'll dispel any of the other stuff that's going on because we, we have to be in that new place. You're either flowing towards the new or, or you aren't. There is no in-between at this point. You're going to have yeah. to make your vibrational stance and, 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 you know, and move in that and, and keep, you know, the energy flowing. Uh, so I, I took guided to go and find that post really quick and, and, and share that. Um, yeah. Because, uh, well, and, I, and I like that because it really comes down and it might sound contrite, but it, it comes down to simply a choice. Are you yeah. going to choose the magic? Are you going to choose the madness? And, right. you know, what resonates with you and some people, the madness resonates with them. And, oh, yeah. And that's yeah. not and if you if you it's not right or wrong. No, it's not. It's it's it, it's, it's there that it's a choice that they have. And right. what we're really here to do is help those that have been um, that have come in prepared for this new evolution mm-hmm. um, to actually have the courage to make the journey with us. Yeah, that that is so true. And I do want to say something, maybe I'm going to play the devil's advocate really quick. Uh, but uh, I, I know the school of thought, of there, there is, you know, kind of no right or wrong, there, there is. There, I think that um, yes and no to both, that there, we have choice, which is our free will. Are there some better choices than others? Absolutely. Um, are there some choices that will not serve at the end of the day that are not in right alignment? Yes. And will those have consequences? They will. So are they there that people can learn and evolve from it? Absolutely. But I, could I consider that to be, uh, that's not the choice of your best alignment to mm-hmm. be eliminated from something that you were meant to be um, a part of and it would be like a tree, uh, an acorn that was designed to be an oak tree. And it says, no, I'm going to choose the path of a Fraser fir, but that's not according to your encoding. So that would be going the wrong way against your, the, the nature of who you are here to be. So though, yes, it may not seem like there's a right or wrong, but I do believe that sometimes we do um, have to choose the narrow way and eliminate certain options from our um, understanding. And even if we have to make it temporarily seem wrong in a sense so that we don't even, that's not even an option for me. Um, This is the path of highest evolution. This is the path that I'm choosing. Yes, I, I will be growing and evolving and expanding along the way. And any other path that is not aligned for that path is not the right path. Um, but we can say there are no wrong paths in a sense, uh, but there will be some consequences. And 
our lives will feel off and misaligned and if we forfeit that greater purpose. So, and the only reason why I brought that up um, is so that it doesn't give other people an easy way out too, to say, well, see, I, I'm a free will and I have choices. And at the end of the day, everything will always work out. Your choice isn't better than the choice I'm making. I'm not right. Uh, you're not righter than me. And, and I'm not wrong for what I'm doing. Um, well, I think it just depends. <laughs> um, it, it, it just vibrationally depends. Uh, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, but I get it all comes down talking. to the consequence. It does. Yeah. There's it, always, it, it, like I say, no, to me, no decisions right or wrong. There's consequences that you may like or dislike. Yeah. From the decisions that you, the choices that you, make. that you exactly very well stated. Oh, as always, so yeah. beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, uh, Gina, <laughs> then I'll uh, come back and share our resources, and Brenda, I will have you to uh, close it out. You know, as I listen to this, I what strikes me is if you take it back to almost the beginning. And you think about people have been put on this earth at this time mm -hmm. to have uh, to make a positive difference to humanity and to the planet. Mm -hmm. And they came in with that purpose. And many of the people that we're talking about will have a really well-defined sense of purpose. And actually, they, they want to make a positive difference. Mm -hmm. But I think you know, we, we, we've used the journey analogy quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think if we use, continue to use that journey analogy, that, you know, you might uh, have a destination in mind and that you, you want to get there and you want to make a, a positive and constructive difference. Mm -hmm. but which route you take will determine mm -hmm. whether you're going to get there at all or whether you're going to get there late or whether you're going to get there in any shape to be of any use. Right. And it seems to me that as we've been talking about this, that mm -hmm. if, you know, those of you that are listening to this, what I'm really urging you to is take some time to self-reflect. Yes. And don't just dismiss this. You know, I've got a high sense of purpose and, you know, I've got the higher moral, moral ground. Right. Really start to sit with this and think about where does your vibration sit mm -hmm. for the most part of the time? Are you spending your time um, being in a place where you are angry, that you are, are frustrated, that you have a sense of, of lack, that you feel that what you're entitled to isn't happening? where there's division, where I'm right, you're wrong. I don't mm. like you because you're not the right shape or not the right color or not the right creed that, you know, you've got to do things my way or um, you are, uh, that things are wrong. And there could be people who say, well, that's what you're saying. If you don't do it my way, then mm -hmm. you, you're wrong. But that's actually, I don't think the message that we're giving here. No, absolutely not. Right. If absolutely you are, not. If you really take the time to recognize to yourself, I mean, um, Annalie, Anna Nicole, and Ali Nicole, mm -hmm. sorry, Ethan, you talk about being a journalist in your own life, and that's yes. never been more important. Mm. Look at the patterns of your language, of your behavior, the things that you avoid because they feel a bit uncomfortable or unfamiliar, the old patterns of, um, of, of action that you take and ask yourself, does this put me in a place of higher vibration? Am I coming from a place of love, gratitude, kindness, compassion, collaboration, or something else? And the, what strikes me is whilst all of this maelstrom is going on around us, mm -hmm. the, the capacity to hold the ground, hold that vibrational ground, which says, I have faith that I am in the right place, that I am here to do my role, whatever that turns out to be. And it might not be the one that I thought it was, but ultimately... If I have that faith and I come from a place of love, um, 
I will be well placed to help others do the same. Right. Right. And that oh, requires yes. it's courage in the small moment by moment rather than the grand gesture. Mm. And mm-hmm. it's being mindful. You know, you can't be an authentic, um, genuine, enlightened leader of family, friends, community, country, unless you lead yourself first. Right. And that's the most important choice that you have to make, Mm -hmm. moment by moment. And we will all dip below the line at times. But how quickly do you get back up? Do you recognise that you're on the way down? And do you pick yourself up and get yourself back? And sometimes that's hard. Yes, right, but, right. But as you have both so eloquently said, ladies, that when you do, you open yourself to the magic. Hmm. And I'm very mindful that you, Brenda, talked about people who have only just touched the surface. I believe it's a bit mm-hmm. like an iceberg. And what we are seeing at the moment is the tip of the iceberg of people's yeah. potential. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, mm-hmm. you are entirely responsible for yourself. And so many people, I think, are deflecting the, um, the looking at themselves because that's painful um, by taking on all of these causes and pointing the finger at somebody yeah. else. Right. Oh, Absolutely. wow. That, that, was perfectly, that was perfectly stated. And, you know, I, I want to say this um, so I can quickly share about the, the, the new divine order in times of shifts. Something I want to go back to really quick that you stated, uh, Gina, and something I've actually been thinking even through as we've been you know, talking through this session is that, yeah, there will be others who will listen and say, well, you're, you're taking the position that where you are or what you're speaking is, is the right way or the gospel or so. But here, here's the deal. Again, we have to be sensitive to timing. And it's not so much about making people's approaches wrong. It is the time, if you're, if you're not aware of the timing that we're in and what can be going on and what should not be going on during a certain time, then it doesn't matter how right you are if the positioning is out of alignment. So you, you can have the right cause and then there was a time where, yes, you could share your voice a certain way and even share it from the place of frustration or the place of, um, and some people do it and it's just one or two, but when it becomes kind of a chronic thing, um, that's perpetuating going on and is causing division and different things. You don't understand the, you know, the, the timing. It's, it's almost like a, a football player on a basketball court. You know, he, he's, he's in the game, but he's, but he's in the wrong arena. And, <laughs> and, and so if you don't understand um, the timings, and, and one thing that um, most know about me, they've been around me uh, for quite some time. I'm very grounded in the present, but I'm a very futuristic energy. So I'm already normally 10 to 20 years ahead in preparation on different things that most um, catch up to um, or have been oblivious to. And so there are individuals who are uniquely gifted, who do have some awareness around the, the timing. You know, different than someone who's gardening or they're, they're yeah, I bring it even basic, who's planting. There are certain times of the year where you plant certain flowers for the best results. And then there are certain times that it's not the best time. And so you have to know the timings that we're in. If it's not time to be striking and you're not aware of that, then you, you're going to forfeit. You may have the right method that you've been using and your cause and claim may be legit. But if you're out of the timing on which it needs to be um, being done. It doesn't matter what your cause is. You're out of position. And, and again, there'll be consequences to that. And you, you don't want to miss that being blindsided to yourself following a, a cause or a calling that is not really ultimately what's supposed to be going on during this time. So we do have to be in touch and in tune and in sync to, to know what's required during this time and what isn't. So let me quickly share this and then we'll get ready to wrap up. I'll share our resources too. Um, So the new divine order in time shifts. And one of the reasons why people are, whether they admit this or not, it's something that's deep within, 
why they're doing what they're doing is because they're trying to hold on to these old concepts. They want to be the saviors. They want to be all these different things to make names for themselves to do. There's a whole lot of different agendas that come into play. Again, things that need to be healed. But the wisdom that came through is that you are not the savior. You are the light of the world that others discover their true power of self-deliverance, self-liberation, and inner light that leads them to source solutions for their divine path. I'm going to repeat that. You are not the savior. You are the light of the world that others discover their true power of self-deliverance, self-liberation, and inner light that leads them to source solutions for their divine path. This is the time of shifting from savior and enabler and blamer to self-responsibility, self-accountability, and source reliability. So because what's happened is we've been conditioned to be these problem solvers, which I teach about being a solution catalyst. And so there's been this problem solving um, premise instead of the solution catalyst. So most are operating in this savior mode, but what happens is they end up becoming enablers and that's why people need people to follow them. They need to you know, um, have people feed into them a certain way. But we are in a time right now where it's really kind of a tough love from source in the sense that's kind of kicking in. What's happening is that it's up leveling humanity all around the globe to really stop putting their faith in others and to start connecting to um, the divine uh, source alignment for their total well-being. So again, we're talking, we've been talking about leaders, but this applies to whether leaders are in business, ministry, any type of higher service, um, you know, professionals, that it's really time to let go of trying to make yourself be something that you're not called to be. And you got to start moving people through accelerated formats. And that's something that, that we do so that you don't have people who are, you're enabling them and they are becoming codependent on your voice. Um, and we'll talk more about that when we get into the conference is that there, there are a lot of shifts that have to be made. But um, and yeah, like I said, I won't get too much into that. But we have some resources because we do believe in during this time, bringing people through the accelerated formats. And that's why we, we publish primarily in intentional interactive journal formats to provide just enough of a trigger mechanics for others so that it stimulates inside of them what they need to um, have in order to become self-empowered really through their own information and start creating their solutions. And uh, we also conduct VIP days and intensives and things that are no longer than 90 days. Um, of course, we support people um, in longer formats, but um, the goal is that you, you want to have these accelerated experiences so that people become really empowered and you make sure that they're not becoming in a codependent uh, you know, type uh, format. So um, I mentioned that the new Illumination Leadership Light Shine Forth, the virtual conversational um, training conference. We're going to have information for that uh, below and also resources that can help you to uh, start leveling up. So I'm going to share um, two from each of us and I'll start with mine. I have a publication that's called New Light and New Hope. It's a motivational uh, Q&A journal for New Era Illuminate uh, Leadership. And then also there's Lighting the Shore, Leading the New Way. It's an entrepreneurial leadership creation journal for designing an illuminate uh, impact agenda. And uh, Gina also uh, co-authored that uh, uh, with me. And uh, then there's a publication, two publications from Gina, one which I had the privilege to um, provide a forward for. And it's called It's Time to Become a Beacon of Light and Hope. How to Become an Illuminating Enlightened Leader and Light the Way in Challenging Times. And so you can't be lighting the way in challenging times if you are coming from a vibration of frustration and in the lower ground, you're not being, you're not being the light. You're not being a beacon um, of hope if you're coming from that way. And you certainly aren't illuminating enlightenment. Um, another one that uh, from Gina is 
uh, enlightened emerging leadership, an intentional journal and planner to support your development as an enlightened leader. And you need that enlightenment during these times because you can't be illuminate if you aren't enlightened. And we can see that there's a lack of enlightened leadership um, that's, that's taking place uh, because there's no real awareness and connection to the timing and how things are progressing and shifting and what this new world is about. So that is going to help you tremendously. And so then from Brenda, we have uh, prepare for your accelerated awakening, shifting from resisting to responsibility for your higher purpose in the new world. And so no time to delay. It is time to accelerate uh, uh, for sure. And then we have another one by Brenda, and it's the 30-day wake-up call, a mini course and workbook for your awakening journey. This is These publications are so important, and hers are very vital because if you aren't awakened, you can't be enlightened. And again, you can't be illuminate without um, those working together really like a hand in glove. So it is time to accelerate. It's time to wake up, wake up. Do not forfeit your divine purpose and calling by getting caught up in the things that you are not a part of. There are other people, maybe that's their job to be doing that and staying in that lower frequency. And yes, they are helping, inspiring, empowering some uh, people to some extent. But those who are called to be part of the new illuminate light leadership, you've got to go to high ground and be in high ground at this point and raise people up there. It's time to be the butterflies and the eagles and the phoenixes. These resources will help you to evolve and expand and be able to rise you know, in that way. Um, some other forthcoming works uh, that will probably be uh, out during uh, the actual conference is uh, the new illuminate leadership light um, factor is lighting the shore and leading the new way as an evolutionary lighthouse leader, Penurial uh, Journal. And then there's a new leadership light on Damascus Road, and it's an illuminate awakening journey journal for repositioning your leadership light mission and agenda. And I'm going to have contributions from these two um, queens uh, within uh, those publications. So we've shared quite a bit here. And um, I know this was kind of a heavy topic, but it was one I felt the urgency to, to come forth with and uh, to shed light is, you know, don't allow yourself to be blindsided and it's time to level up so you don't forfeit um, this, this greater expansion because there will never be another time in history of the opportunities that are being presented now. So don't get fooled about it. it's never too late and I can always know we, we're in a new grid. That's old paradigm thinking. You know, th this is the time you've got to make your, your vibrational stance so that you can line up with the, the truth of your greater expansion. So um, I just want to thank uh, Gina and Brenda for uh, this immense uh, experience uh, here. It's been fabulous. And I will um, turn it over to Brenda. And, and Gina, if you had any final thoughts, you can definitely share it. And then um, Brenda, have you close us out. <laughs> My only thoughts are to say to people who are listening to this, times of the essence, you have so much to offer. Please, please do listen and take the necessary action to make things to a place where you can fulfill your potential. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. That was that was stellar and the, the perfect way to give people that, that call to action. I also want to mention that the links to the publications um, are also going to be uh, below. So there'll be information about those and also information that you can learn more about the three of us um, as well. So um, thank you, uh, Gina, again, for sharing that and for being here. And Brenda, thank you. And I turn it over to you for um, final thoughts and conclusion. Thank you. It has been a joy just being here in this space with both Eugenia and Ellie Nicole. Um, there is a sense of urgency in this. I think that was well communicated throughout this sort of mini training here. Um, it, the time is now. It really is. It's now. It's time to move. 
there is such a community waiting to embrace you on the other side that this is not a solo journey that anybody is taking by any stretch of the imagination. This mm. is this is a community of people that are taking this evolutionary step and none of us quite know exactly what to expect on the other side. It is, um, it's an adventure for all of us, but I think we know that the feeling that we're stepping into that light um, accelerated energy and just really invite everyone to join us, to step into your new evolved purpose. People may know what their purpose was in this third dimension, but um, this mm. is, there's an evolution to that as well. So yeah. asking yourself, what is, what is the evolution of this old purpose and stepping into that, bringing that into the new energy along with you. Um, that's a really good place to start and to join into this new acceleration. So really in encourage you to stay connected with us, to join us, to follow the links below this video, explore on your own to see what resonates with you and what doesn't, and uh, step into this new acceleration with us.